Well, hey guys, it's Mike Vestiva. Welcome back to part seven of the Mini Pinsgauer 6x6 build series. In this video, we get a lot of cool things done. There may or may not be some drumming in this video. We may or may not be driving at the end of the video. You'll have to stick around and check it out. All right, let's get on with the build. We're gonna start on the shifter and start working on a shifter lockout. Enjoy. So here's the center plate that's gonna go down there by the shifter and I cut this out a while back and already bead rolled it. I don't wanna waste the piece because now we got the shifter coming through here. So I got this marked down, I'm gonna cut this section out of here, weld the rest of it in, but I wanna actually make this piece or another piece bolt in place in case I do have to do any work with the steering linkage or the shifter. I can easily remove this by unbolting it and work in there without being a hassle. So let's cut this out and get it mounted next. All right, so we got this whole center plate welded on here. Next, we're gonna bolt this middle one on here for servicing this thing. And some of you guys that followed along in the articulated dump truck build, you know I bought this tool in the process of that and I used it quite a bit. It's a rib nut tool for about 50 bucks or so. You can get one of these and some rib nuts and they make a wide assortment between metric and standard. So we're gonna get in here and I'm gonna show you guys the process of at least installing one. We'll get on with the rest of the build. Alright, now that we got the actual shifter worked out for the most part and the floorboards all finished, I think we're going to move on to working on uh, building a bench seat for this thing. Add a little more creature comforts. We got some plywood, some foam, and some pleather. So let's get started with that next.
right, I'm really excited how that lower part of that bench turned out. I'm not gonna bring you guys along for upholstering the back because basically it's the same thing as we did on the floor, you get the idea. But I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna make this so we can lift this out and store stuff under the seat. It'll just be nice to have a little extra dry storage under this machine. So we're getting really close to driving this. After this whole bench setup, I think we could probably start working on exhaust manifold, weld that up and probably start it pretty soon. Well, how about that guys? Got more pleather here than a Twisted Sister concert. Pretty happy how this turned out and the whole bench sheet's set up so it's removable. I'll overlay a little bit of footage of pulling the benches out. Not much storage below this thing. I'd like to have a little bit more, but I can keep some tie down straps and maybe a little tool roll, wrench roll, things like that. But I made everything so you can pull them out easy for servicing this thing. And maybe some point I might want to do like a solo seat on here and just have extra cargo space for hauling longer things. Pretty excited about that. And you know what time it is? It's about time for a drum break. All right, so we're gonna cut out the exhaust manifold flange here so we can start working on the exhaust system and hopefully fire this thing up in the video. That cut out now.
All right, I'm super excited about this. We are getting extremely close to taking this thing out on a maiden voyage, a little test drive. I know it's gonna be a long time before it's completely finished, but it'll be really neat to see it move under its own power. So we gotta figure out a temporary tank, and here's the stock tank that came with it. I can't mount it on top of the engine anymore because the alternator's mounted up there, and I was never gonna have it sitting in the middle of the bed here anyways. Uh, this tank I came across, and I think I'm gonna use it. Basically, I think I'm gonna mount it somewhere like this. It's a two and a half gallon plastic tank. I originally wanted to put a fuel tank somewhere back behind the seat here. The original Pinsgauer's fill from this location. So I think I'm gonna use it and two and a half gallons isn't quite the range I want on this thing, but I think I might get another one of these and put a secondary tank back here, super slim. And another cool thing about mounting the tank like this is uh, it's really compact, won't take up much room in the bed, but you also get gravity feed to the carb. I don't wanna run electric fuel pump on here. Just one more thing to kind of falter and be an issue. So simplicity is always best, especially when you're out in the woods. Uh, so after that, all the thing we have to do is mount up a battery and do a little bit of wiring and we can actually drive this thing. Pretty excited. Next, I actually have to put this little gas valve inside here and get it threaded. And I learned this technique from our brother. He's installed a few of these diesel heaters and his campers. I got a little raising rod here. Run it through here, drop the fitting on top of that. And slide it down. Pretty good little technique. So I've had a few people concerned about the approach angle and ideally you would want to have basically nothing overhanging the front tires, but I don't know how you're going to pull that off with a cab forward design. You're always going to sacrifice some approach angle to that. But to give you guys a perspective on this, it's about a little over 22 inches here and everything kind of goes on a nice swooping angle. I'm going to do a front skid plate on here. So if you do get up on anything, it just slides under it. And another thing to consider is from the front tire up, to the front end of the machine is about a 45 degree angle. So I think it's a pretty good, I mean, you have to kind of balance all this kind of stuff out. And I was gonna sacrifice actually even though I'll have my feet inside of here. So I tried to do the best approach angle I could and still have some comfort in the cab. So this wasn't the maiden voyage I was really hoping for, but as you guys saw, it drove under its own power, but not very well. So there's a lot of little teething things I need to sort out. One is the original Polaris actually had a transmission gear lockout and I ordered some bicycle levers. It's cable actuated and I actually got some bicycle levers I'm gonna hook up for that. So the transmission actually has a true lockout per gear. Another thing is the original Polaris belt on the original 6x6 was way too short for this engine application. So I got online, couldn't find the belt I really needed. It was a very long CV snowmobile belt. 
And so I ordered the next one down and I need to get around and order a longer belt because no matter what, even with the tension off the belt, as far as I can go with the motor back, it still has too much tension on the CV. And so basically it's squealing when you're holding the brakes on and the transmission brakes going on. And that also that load with the motor trying to power the transmission because the belt's too tight also makes it hard to shift in and out of gear. A few little teething issues like that. Plus we got to relocate the keyed ignition and a choke up front here. So I'm not reaching over the seat to start it, things like that. So I felt a little rushed to kind of get this last little bit of the video wrapped up. But in the next few weeks, I should be able to sort out all these little teething issues and uh, get this thing running proper. Well, another thing is I got to get these front hubs so they engage. I need to wire them up with a toggle because right now, just the two rear axles live all the time and no weight over the back end, it gets hideous traction. I mean, terrible. I definitely need to put a lot of weight over the back end here. Probably a jerry can, a spare tire in the back. Something to give it maybe 100 pounds at least of weight on the back because right now it gets bad traction. So <laughs> those are little things will work out. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Till next time, take care. Bye.